Here's some more homework help on the problems on page 783. Uh, I just picked some random problems out of each section. So as you can see, this is number 19. The directions are, uh, we have this triangle ABC, and we're told that C is the right angle. So we'll just go ahead and label these other two angles. And uh, if we know that side A, which is this side, is 5, uh, side B, which is this side, is 6, uh, it's our job to find everything else. Uh, so we need, in this case, to find the hypotenuse. So uh, let's just start there. Uh, we know to use the Pythagorean theorem for that. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. All right, C squared. Oh, sorry about that. I get rid of that. Uh, C squared. I'll grab my calculator. C squared is 61. And on these, we're supposed to round answers to the nearest tenth. So C is going to be the square root of 61 to the nearest tenth. Uh, that's 7.8 approximately. Okay, so we found side C. Now let's work on these uh, other angles. One of them will use a trig value, and then the other one will use the, the fact that the sum of the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So um, it doesn't really matter where you start. Let's see if we can find angle A using one of the uh, trig ratios. Okay, so uh, I could use sine A. Sine, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so I'm going to find angle A by using the sine ratio. S sine A is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, and to solve for A, remember I'm going to do the inverse sine. So when I do inverse sine on both sides, this equation becomes this. Okay, and now I'm going to find A, just going to my calculator, and uh, we looked today about how to uh, do second sine, that activates the inverse sine function on your calculator, and then the parentheses, we're going to put 5 divided by 7.8, and to the nearest tenth, that would be 39.9 degrees. Okay, and that is the measurement for angle A. Okay, so now let's um, take a look at angle B, and again we can use the idea that 180 degrees total minus the 90 degree right angle minus angle A, and uh, when we find this difference we'll have angle B. So calculator 180 minus 90 minus 39.9 that's 50.1 degrees, and that is angle B. Okay, so those are your three answers for problem number 19. And if you're within, uh, I, I already told you, if you're within the range of plus minus one-tenth in your rounding, uh, that's fine. Uh, don't, don't get too worried about that. Okay, so uh, that's number 19. Uh, let's take a look now at this problem in the same section. Uh, this time we're given sides A and C. So uh, just to give us a picture of our right triangle, C is still the right angle, so this is side 32. If this is angle A, then this is side A. Uh, this will be angle B and side B. All right, so let's find side B using Pythagorean theorem. 32 squared is equal to 17 squared plus b squared. So in your calculator, let's do 32 squared minus 17 squared. Okay, let's see what that is. 32 squared minus 17 squared. That's 735. That's b squared. So we need the square root of that number, so if you want to just leave that number and raise it to the parentheses one-half power, that is 27.1, .1, 
rounded to the nearest tenth. Okay, so side B we found as, I'm sorry, 27.1. All right. Okay. Um, I think I wrote down the wrong number. I did. I'm sorry. I just noticed. Um, I wrote down C is 32, and it should be 22. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna. I don't want to start this video over. So, if you'll just bear with me. Uh, I don't know why I wrote down. He probably was. You were wondering, weren't you? Why did he write 32 and it should be 22? And I don't have a good answer for that. So uh, let me let me back up. Uh, this is 22 squared. We can fix this real quick. 22 squared minus 17 squared is 195. Now we need the square root of that. And that is 13.96, but we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So uh, we're going to round that all the way up to 14. So that's what side B is. OK, that makes more sense. I apologize. Um, OK, so once again, uh, let's do something different this time. <clears throat> um, let's approach from angle B. Uh, let's do a different trig ratio just to be different. Um, from angle B, uh, what if we did opposite over adjacent? Remember what that trig ratio is, opposite over adjacent? adjacent. Uh, that's the tangent ratio. So let's do tangent B is the opposite side, which is for B, that's this side, 14, over the adjacent side, which for B is this one, 17. So to solve for angle B, we just do inverse tangent on both sides. OK, and so grab your calculator. Do second tan, 14 divided by 17. And I got 39.47, but we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So we'll say 39.5 degrees. Okay, and that is our answer for uh, num angle B. And now we can use our 180 degree principle, 180 minus 90 minus the angle B that we found, 39.5. And uh, that should give us angle A. And it looks like that's 50.5. We'll just do it this way. So angle A is 50.5 degrees. OK. All right. Very good. Um, next uh, set of problems. Uh, this is number 26. And uh, on 26, uh, we're supposed to sketch a right triangle. OK, and uh, let's see. One of the acute met, uh, angles is going to be called theta. So it really doesn't matter which. So uh, they're going to give us a trig ratio. In this case, they give us cosine theta. OK, so you got to think, if you're looking out from this angle that we've identified as theta, cosine means adjacent, the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Well, that tells us two sides of this triangle. The adjacent side for theta is this side. The hypotenuse, of course, is the longer side, or the side across from the right angle. And so now we need, in order to find all the trig ratios, we need to find this missing side. So once again, we're back to the Pythagorean theorem. 20 squared is 7 squared plus b squared. 
20 squared minus 7 squared is b squared. So let's do 20 squared minus 7 squared. That's 351. And now we do the square root of that. And we get 18.7. And let's see. Um, yeah, we can just leave it as to the 10th. It doesn't really say. Okay, now we should be able to find all the other trig ratios of theta. So let's just go with sine, sine theta. Sine, again, is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is 18.7. And the hypotenuse is 20. And uh, let's see, is this one of those? Um, yeah. I forgot, I told you um, this needs to be in simplified radical form. That's the way the book has it, so. We're doing the right thing. We just, I'm just getting, trying to get you to have the same answer, same form as what the book has. Okay. So B is the square root of 51. And that actually uh, does simplify the square root of 51 because um, you can do the 39 times 9 is 351. It's like the square root of 9 times the square root of 39. So in simplified form, it would be 3 times the square root of 39. Okay, so we're just going to change the form. So instead of saying 18.7, we're going to use the exact measurement, 3 radical 39. Okay, so now back to this. Uh, sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So that would be your answer for sine theta. 3 root 39 over 20. Of course, we already have cosine. Now let's do tangent theta. All right, tangent for theta, again, is opposite over adjacent. So we're just going to take the opposite side to theta and put it over the adjacent side. And we can't, uh, can't simplify that, so that ends up being our answer. Okay, let's do the rest of these. Uh, now we're ready to work on the inverses. So the inverse of cosine is secant. So it, the inverse means we just take cosine and flip it over. And that's our answer for secant theta. That's easy enough. Uh, the inverse of sine is cosecant. All right, so we're going to flip over this fraction, 20 over 3 root 39. And then uh, just remember, we're going to rationalize these. So that just means multiply by the radical, 20 root 39. And then this is 39 times 3. Root 39 times itself is 39. 39 times 3 is 117. So cosecant theta is going to be 20 root 39 over 117. Looks like a weird answer. And then the only one left is cotangent. And that's the inverse of tangent. So we just flip that fraction over. And then basically do the same thing, rationalize. And I'm running out of room. So multiplying these together, we get 7 root 39. And again, on the bottom, we get 117. And that ends up being our final answer for that because we can't simplify anymore. Okay. So uh, again, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong. It's just not as exact if you find a value and then round it like I did at the beginning. Uh, they are wanting exact answers for these, so that's why we're leaving those in simplified radical form. Okay, so those are all your answers for number 26. All right, so uh, I picked number 30, so we'll do the same thing on number 30. So sketch a right triangle. 
put theta wherever you want it. We'll just put it in the same spot. Now, this is in terms of secant, all right? And remember, uh, secant is the inverse of cosine. So let's just back up a minute. Uh, most people are familiar with sine, cosine, and tangent, not as familiar with the inverses. Well, remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay? So if that were the case, uh, that would be 9 over 16 for this particular um, secant theta. Cosine theta would be the inverse. Okay, so let's just think of it that way. The adjacent side for theta is measured at 9. That's this side. The hypotenuse is measured at 16. And once again, we need this opposite side of theta. Okay, so Pythagorean theorem, 16 squared is 9 squared minus b squared, plus b squared, sorry. 16 squared minus 9 squared is b squared. So let's see what that is. 16 squared minus 9 squared, that's 175. And now we're going to do the square root of 175, which does simplify. Um, 25 times 7, or we could think of it as the square root of 25 times the square root of 7. If you multiply those together, 25 times 7 is 175. So the simplified radical form of this is 5 root 7. Okay, so that's the measurement of this leg opposite theta, 5 root 7. And now we're ready to go finding all of the, we've actually found one of the 5. We found cosine theta already, that's 9 sixteenths. Uh, secant theta was given, so let's just work our way through the others. Uh, sine theta, remember sine is opposite, which in this case is 5 root 7, over hypotenuse, which is 16. So that's the answer for sine theta. Um, let's see, what else do we need? Tangent theta. Okay, looking from theta's perspective, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's 5 root 7 over 9. Uh, now let's work on the inverses, the other inverses. Um, we can just go ahead and do cotangent theta. That's just flipping this over. 9 over 5 root 7, and then rationalize. Get rid of this, since you saw how we came up with that side. A little bit of review of working with radicals in this lesson. That's, that's a good thing. Okay, so when we ration, uh, yeah, rationalize, we get 9 root 7. And then uh, this would be 35. Uh, root 7 times itself is just 7. 7 times 5 is 35. And uh, that doesn't simplify, so that ends up being our answer. Let's see, what else do we need? We got uh, sine. Uh, we need cosecant, the inverse of sine. Okay, so we just take the sine ratio and flip it over. And rationalize. So that becomes 16 root 7 over 35. And again, that doesn't simplify, so we can leave that as our answer. So did we get them all? Uh, sine theta is there. Cosine theta is there. Tangent theta, got that one. Cosecant theta and cotangent theta. Got them all? All right. Okay, uh, this is my last example. This is uh, taken from the last block of problems. And so... Uh, Again, uh, angle ABC is a another right triangle. Uh, C is the right angle. Okay, so we'll just call these A and B. We know that angle B is 17.2 degrees. We also know that side B, which has to be this side, the way I have this constructed, has to be 8.3. So uh, let's see. It's our job to find the remaining sides and angles. Okay, 
So uh, we can find the uh, missing angle first. That's easy because that's just going to be 180 minus 90 minus 17.2. And that will be the measurement for angle A because they have to add up to 180 degrees. And that's 72.8. And let's see, do we to the nearest tenth? Yeah, so we're good there. All right. Okay, so uh, now let's work on uh, finding these other sides. So um, we, we got some choices uh, since we know what angle A is now, or we could uh, look out from angle B. All right, so think about looking from angle B. You know the opposite side. Um, Let's just say we wanted to find the adjacent side. All right, so let's think of a trig ratio that involves opposite over adjacent. And hopefully you're recognizing these by now. Uh, that's the tangent ratio, opposite over adjacent. adjacent. So let's do tangent 17.2 is equal to the opposite side, 8.3 over the adjacent side, which is what we're trying to find. All right. So now we can, um, if you want to think about multiplying by x, and then uh, just think about dividing by tan 7.2 on both sides, and we're setting it up to use your calculator. Okay, so let's grab your calculator, and uh, you're going to do 8.3 divided by tan, and then in parentheses, 17.2. And to the nearest tenth, that is 26.8. Okay, so we just found this length by uh, using the tangent function. Uh, we would call this side A. Side A is approximately 26.8 units. Okay, and then we can um, just use the Pythagorean theorem, or you could use another trig ratio if you like. Um, you, can, you can choose. Um, we'll just use the theorem. C squared is equal to 8.3 squared plus 26.8 squared. Okay, so grab your calculator. 8.3 squared plus 26.8 squared. And then the square root of that is 28.1 rounded. C squared was that big number. I didn't write it down. So C, the square root, is 28.1. Side C. Okay, I think we got them all. Uh, there's side C. We found side A. Uh, we found angle A here at 72.8. Um, I think that's it. So uh, I hope that helps. Um, along with the notes, I tried to give you some notes that matched up pretty well with these. And uh, there's another video where I worked out a couple of problems. So. Um, do your best. Work hard on it. Um, if you didn't quite get it by yourself, make sure you can do it by yourself. That's very important. And as always, uh, bring questions with you either to academic support or to class, and I'll be glad to help you.